Hello, my name is host Eric, I'm the host talking with famous people, and I have a little list of topics that I made, um, and one of the topics on there is about ENTP intuition, and while I have a chance here with just Kit Kats in the room and me to try out this new gear arrangement as well, it's giving me some difficulty in terms of allowing me to use the same mic for both the recording and for the talking and for the talking across go to meetings. So we'll see if this works. At any rate, the notion here is that basically ENTPs can't explain their beliefs any better than anybody else. And worse than they would seem to be able to. The extroverted intuition process, as filtered through TI, is one that provides ENTP a lot of gut instincts about the future. Some of which are right and some of which are wrong. But some of which ENTP will believe in temporarily and some of which they will believe in long term. So, one of the conundrums of dealing with an ENTP in your life, if you have one in your life, is you don't know, and neither do they, how they're going to roll with this idea. And it's a challenge because the level of enthusiasm is going to be the same regardless. Am I really taking this idea seriously? Is this going to be something that I roll with, or is it just a momentary flash of enthusiasm? We don't know. And that can be frustrating for another party, obviously. So, the other thing is, sometimes we're spectacularly wrong. Sometimes we're spectacularly right. And we always behave as though we're spectacularly right. And we can always justify it pretty well, too. So, again, another element that's going to make it tricky is we're going to sound very convincing about it. We're going to know the arguments to make to uh, cause it to be believable by others. And we're going to make those arguments. And over time, some, some people who are close to us perhaps grow hesitant in accepting what we say. And there's a certain good cause for that. Namely, that these are not logical conclusions we're drawing about the future, logical predictions. Even though we can justify them logically and they make sense logically after the fact, they're intuitions. Just like introverted intuition is an intuition and I was thinking about this the other day like how some of the things I predicted five or six years ago have been correct and some of them have been incorrect one area where I was totally incorrect was about gas prices I had said about five or six years ago by 2016 17 somewhere like that gas prices will be six bucks six bucks a gallon um, I was wrong I was just completely wrong I was completely convinced of it. I was wrong. So, just goes to show you. But on other things, I was right. I predicted the skyrocketing gold price back before it skyrocketed. I predicted, or Corey predicted, and I agreed with him, that the housing bubble would pop when it, approximately when it did. But... It doesn't mean I'm going to be right about everything. So, one nice thing about being an ENTP, I think, though, is that we're not particularly subject to confirmation bias. We understand that we get it wrong, but we also understand that others don't others don't respond well to reality. They don't want the actual reality of things. They want to hear that, you know, they want to, they want to know that you're enthusiastic about it. Hmm. Well, Kit Kats indicates that she has the same sort of gut intuitions, but uh, less logic driven, and that they're more about people. And mine are more about events, like motion, things in motion. But um, I think it's important to remember that. For those who 
or less far along, we have to be a little cautious because we are we can be very convincing people. And we tend to be convinced of our own correctness. But we should know better at a certain point, right? Like, we know that no matter how certain we are, it's not, not really certain certain, <laughs> you know? It doesn't really make logical sense because if it did, it wouldn't be... There'd be no magic to it, right? If it really made complete logical sense, somebody else would have already figured it out. And our prediction, projection, whatever, great idea, wouldn't uh, wouldn't resonate as special. So, ANTPs, we need to acknowledge to a certain extent that we're probably the least rational of the NTs. INTP, ENTP, INTJ, ENTJ. Yeah, ENTP is the least rational of us. So, uh, you know, given that we're the least rational rationals, we should. We're kind of a bridge, a bridge type between the rationals and the other types. I think. We, we're more feeling, with feelings in the seventh slot, in our own feelings in the seventh slot doesn't matter. We're still more feely than the other types because, well, I think it's because we lack clear defenses or mechanisms of competition in that area. So that's my thoughts on ENTP uses of NE and of being the least rational rational and uh, most prone, I think, to magical thinking, but I think that's a good thing. This makes it a bridge type. To the extent that we can engage magical thinking, acknowledge that it is magical thinking, call it as such, and incorporate it into a, a sensible worldview, we facilitate this bridging between the rationals and non-rationals. I mean, not that, not that the non-rationals are not rational. I mean, the rationals and the other types. So, that's what I have to say about that. And, uh, that's about it. Thanks for watching Talking Fantasy People's short episode.